Is the National Flood Insurance Program really on your side, or is it doing more harm than good? Today, we're tackling a question of, is the National Flood Insurance Program bad for homeowners? With rising premium, fusing regulations, slower claims, a lot of homeowners are starting to wonder, is the National Flood Insurance Program truly serving its purpose? Before we pass judgment though, let's dive deeper into that topic in today's video. So let's get started. Hi, I'm Chris, flood insurance guru. More than 12 years ago, I bought a property in a flood zone just like this right here where the federal government told me my premiums were gonna be $3,000 when they should have been $300. And you see, at that time, I started thinking in my mind as well, is the National Flood Insurance Program really on my side if this kind of mistake can happen? So I've been helping homeowners just like yourself understand these topics the last 12 years. And today we're talking about, is the National Flood Insurance Program really on your side? Are they doing more harm than good? So today we're looking at risk rating 2.0, the 50% rule, things like flood zones. So first of all, let's talk about risk rating 2.0. You know, that was this new fancy program that came out a few years ago across the country where equality was now used in determining flood insurance rates. That's awesome and all. But as a property owner, myself owning a home, I want to know, hey, what goes into my flood insurance rate? But the problem is we're not being told that, hey, replacement cost pay is 25%. The type of flooding event is another 25%. We just know that these things go into a pool and here's your rate. And look, with a new program, I don't know about you, but that makes me start questioning things. You see, at least in the old program book, it may have been complicated, but we had table, we had kind of books we could use to determine rates. Promise now. We don't even know how these rates are being determined, which is probably why there's several states suing the federal government over this new program. You know, you've got things like flood zones, for example. Let's talk a little bit about those real quick. There are those no longer determined rates with the federal program, which confuses a lot of people of, hey, I was in flood zone X before. My rates were $500 a year. Now they're 2000 The federal government's telling me they want more people in preferred flood zones to buy insurance to be protected. But the way they do their rating model now is completely sending a different message. So it's like, do they want me to purchase flood insurance or not? Because when you look at this model, it seems like they really want to price all homeowners out. Let's look at newly mapped of what's going on with this program now. You know, historically before 2.0, when newly mapped, you had a preferred rate basically your first year and your rate went up each year after that. Recently, I talked to a property owner in Florida who was moved into a high risk flood zone from a low risk. They went from basically zero overnight where it's not required to before when it would have been about five or six hundred dollars the first year to six thousand dollars the first year. As a school teacher though, they couldn't even afford this. This was going to be an additional five hundred dollars a month on their mortgage. Now they're looking at selling their dream home. They're looking at foreclosure and all these different things. Now let's talk about this 50% rule. You know, we're seeing this 50% rule and this applies to usually substantial damage. That means that more than 50% of your property market value was damaged from a hurricane or a flood or you improved it more than 50%. So we're seeing now where National Flood Insurance Program officials are simply driving by a property like this right here and determining that value. But here's the problem. You can't just determine something like that by driving by a property like this. In fact, we've had clients in St. Louis that had this happen, where they drove by and they said, hey, it's damaged 55%. That wasn't the case, though. It was actually only damaged about 42%. Thankfully, the property owner was able to use prior appraisal to show that. But if not, they were going to have to fill in the basements, raise the properties, and they were going to be stuck without generating revenue on these properties for probably the next two or three years. So appraisals can play a vital role in this, you know, pre-improvement, pre-damage to show proof of what the property value was. They usually remove land here. So we're talking about really just the building value here when improving these things. So that's why having that appraisal when you buy that property could be very vital to staying below that 50%. But you see, the federal government seems to be enforcing this 50% a lot more. In fact, you got areas like Lee County, Florida, where they're saying that it was not followed correctly. There may have been up to 1,800 properties that were rebuilt after Hurricane Ian, not following the right rules. So now they're threatening to take away community rating system discounts. Remember, these are discounts above and beyond because the community is putting in certain mitigation efforts in place. And they're giving them about 30 days to show proof that these things were followed. We've seen this happen in communities in Louisiana and other parts of the country where basically they're suspended from the National Flood Insurance Program, which means no disaster grants, no disaster loans, no federal flood insurance program, which in many situations means no federally backed mortgages in these special flood hazard areas. So these are all things that are making people start to question, is the National Flood Insurance Program bad? But, you know, when we look at things like risk rating 2.0, flood zones, and the 50% rule, a lot of property owners like myself are probably starting to think, you know, maybe it isn't as good as it once was in 1968 when it originally designed to protect areas along the Mississippi and the Missouri rivers on areas that kept flooding. Or you've got properties in Pennsylvania that have continued the flood over several years, but 
but local officials keep telling property owners that it's rare, it's not going to flood like that again. Yet these floods continue to happen. That we go back and they keep saying, oh, it's climate change. Here's a problem with climate change. It's been happening since the days of the dinosaur. So we can't really blame climate change for these things happening. Really what we could blame is our lack to prepare for changes in the climate. Because climate's always going to be changing. It always has. But as the federal flood insurance program, even as private flood insurance companies, we sometimes have to do a better job of forecasting and modeling these things. Is it difficult? Extremely difficult. Can you be wrong the majority of the time? Absolutely. But everybody probably needs to do a better job modeling this. Just like as a property owner, when you go to buy a property, you want to know, hey, what's my risk today? What's my risk in 36 months? How are things changing? Land development? Are the lakes getting higher? More water in them? All these different things. It's one of the reasons why we built the flood risk tool on our website. You can find it in the description here where you can actually get the flood risk on your property before you purchase it. Also, share, like, and subscribe to this channel so we can continue to provide you with educational content like this video right here. My name is Chris Green, Flood Insurance Gear, and I want to say thank you for tuning in today's video. Is the National Flood Insurance bad? Is it doing more harm than good?